way to go and I have no idea if it was happening. There it is! There we go! Sound suppression. Looks like it. It really looks like it. See, that looks like the sound suppression system going. You can light these things at any second. Definitely looks like this was going on. We'll see. Might just be locks too. Good afternoon and welcome to a very special episode of The Angry Astronaut, my one-month labor of love, well, a little bit over a month actually, is finally over. I am on my way back to the mainland as I am recording this, and I am so incredibly satisfied with what I saw up here, a magnificent display of aerospace technology, something that people seldom get a chance to see, especially as close as I got, literally less than a mile away across the Firth on this peninsula, the Saxivord Peninsula, where the spaceport is located, a place that has had a great deal of significance to these islands for a long time, primarily for military reasons. There was an RAF base here once. And thanks to the new tenants, the owners of the Saxivord spaceport and their customers, RFA, I got an opportunity to see something that no other journalist was able to film film yesterday. There was a documentarian here. However, he's not going to be releasing his documentary probably for at least another year. So the footage you're watching right now is very likely the only footage that is going to be released in regards to this, the second static fire of RFA-1. Now, only five engines were fired this time. Four engines fired on the previous static fire in, in less than a week, probably. They're going to fire all nine engines although I am not going to get a chance to see that because it is time for me to finally leave the island and start covering some other topics. But just showing up to the beach and filming this was not everything that was involved in getting to see this amazing experience. On the previous night, or rather two nights previous, RFA tried for the first time on their static fire, and I was actually up on a mountaintop overlooking Looking at the spaceport that time to get a unique viewpoint, a unique shot of the static fire that nobody else was going to get. However, after four hours of being up there, Obviously, there were some issues, and then RFA was kind enough to let me know that they had experienced a scrub. And I'll tell you, I'm very impressed that they managed to pull this off on the second attempt. We're talking about a brand new rocket, brand new engines that never launched this thing before. Uh, yeah, it's a very big deal when you can successfully carry out a static fire on the second attempt. And by the way, because of the way the wind was behaving, that day. Whenever there was a LOX vent, you really couldn't see what was going on underneath the launch table, and so therefore it was impossible to see whether or not the sound suppression system was going off. And by the way, I'm very impressed with how this launch table is designed. It has a flame deflector that perfectly diverts the entire force of the blast out over the Firth, and rather than damaging anything on land, very good design in my opinion. And even though this is a relatively small rocket, well, it's not a sounding rocket either. We're talking about nine engines with 100 kilonewtons worth of thrust per engine, meaning that the full nine engines are about maybe 50% of what a Raptor is capable of doing. So yeah, not nearly up to the standards of some of these massive rockets, but still much, much bigger than anything Rocket Lab has launched in recent memory. And if this company is capable of delivering on what they're trying to do with their business model and 
and that is to throw over 1.2 metric tons worth of mass up to low Earth orbit for only $5 million. That's going to come very close to matching what SpaceX charges per kilogram for their rideshare services, meaning that European customers are going to have a really good alternative here where they don't have to ship their payloads, their integration technicians, or anything else across the Atlantic. Saves money, saves on carbon footprint, saves on lots of things that are important to European customers. And I'm going to be covering RFA and Saks of Ord in much greater detail in an exclusive tour and an exclusive story about the spaceport that will be released in the next few days. Really amazing experience, so many amazing people that I met, and one of the most impressive things about RFA especially is the international makeup of their team. About 50% of their employees are not Germans, they're from everywhere in the world. We're talking Venezuela, Brazil, Poland, Australia. Canada, just about any country you can think of, if they've got talented engineers, talented technicians, IT people, whatever, RFA is interested in hiring them. And that sets them apart very much so from American companies who simply cannot hire non-American citizens because of ITAR restrictions. And as time goes on, that could really give RFA a competitive edge, especially with European customers. I mean, they can simply tell a European customer, a prospective customer anyway, that they're willing to hire people from their home country, whereas SpaceX or any other American company for that matter is not. Even Rocket Lab is now based in the United States and has significant restrictions on who they can hire, not companies like RFA. But let's get right down to it. You didn't tune into this video to listen to all of this. You tuned into this video to watch the static fire, and I am going to give you a number of different perspectives, going to give you a slow-mo capture of it, and it's a much longer static fire than typical static fires, at least the ones that we're accustomed to seeing from SpaceX and ULA. So without further ado, here's RFA-1 in all of its glory. Here it is! There we go! Here we go! And please keep in mind, per RFA request, I did not live stream this, and actually I got a better image because of that, because I didn't have to compress it for streaming, but can't get any super chats when I don't live stream, so if you'd like to support my efforts, feel free to throw in a super chat right now, or check the description for various ways to support this channel. Now let's have a look at the slow motion fire.
Thank you very much for watching. Go RFA. Go Saxivord. And as always, stay angry about space.